Hi guys, and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So here we have another new radio, and this time it's from Retivis. It's a dual band mobile transceiver with 50 watts on two meters and 40 watts on the 70 centimeter handband. It also has AM receive for airband if that's your thing, and we'll test that out later. Now the box surprisingly was quite large, and that's because the radio itself is a little larger than I thought it was from the photos, but in the box we get the usual suspects a user's manual, which has English and a couple of other languages. Now mine came with a programming cable and I believe this is the first time I've received or seen a USB programming cable which has a USB-C radio connector on the end. Now I don't believe the radio has an actual USB port in the radio, you still need to have this cable which has the USB to serial converter within it. And the reasoning behind this is that when you plug the cable into a computer without the other end into a radio, a virtual COM port becomes available on the computer. A chunky power cable is also included, which I'll attach some Anderson power poles connector to. We then have this rather interesting cable, which appears to be terminated with RJ11 plugs at either end. If you've seen these before, then you would have guessed what this is for. And this is to connect the radio's head or control panel to the main body of the radio, meaning you can remote mount the control head separately from the actual main radio. Of course, we get a vehicle mounting bracket and a microphone. And lastly, in the box is a small hardware pack which contains the screws and bolts you need to secure the radio in a vehicle with the included bracket. Now the mic, well, that's terminated with an RJ45 plug and that can either be plugged directly into the side of the radio or into the head unit. Now I'll show you that in a moment. And the mic actually feels quite nice, kind of a cross between an Icon mic and an Olinko mic. But those buttons are backlit and can be used to direct dial frequencies or change settings on the radio, all from the microphone. The two little switches on the lower left is so that you can either lock the keypad or turn on and off those backlights. As mentioned earlier, the radio is actually larger than I thought it would be, but it does actually feel quite solid and really well made. Down the left side, we have the bracket mounting holes along with an RJ45 socket, which is for the microphone. And down the right side is pretty much the same, but this time the RJ45 socket, which is for the microphone too, is actually mounted on the head unit. Now on the rear, there's the chunky power cable input, an SO239 socket for your antenna, and of course the cooling fan. The front panel hosts a long thin screen with seven multi-function buttons below it. And then there's a further two buttons located on the left side, just above that VFO control. When you remove the head unit using the side clip, you'll notice there's already a short head unit to main unit cable. So if you want to use the radio up in the cockpit of your vehicle, then you do not need to use that extra long cable. The three rotary controls also act as push buttons and the smaller two controls on the right control the volume and squelch for each VFO. Yep, this radio can receive two VFOs at the same time. Now this radio actually also supports cross band repeat. So you could set up a temporary repeater, say receive on 70 centimeters while rebroadcasting that on two meters and vice versa. If we take a closer look at the rear, you'll see a little rubber flap on the lower right. And when open, this provides access to the USB-C socket, which is used with the appropriate programming cable. You'll also notice two 3.5 millimeter sockets labeled as one and two. Now these are both for external speakers and routing audio from one VFO to one speaker automatically if you have two speakers connected. Now, incidentally, the main radio speaker is actually located on the top of the radio, so bear that in mind if you want to install this in a vehicle with the remote head option. Now, when powered up, you'll first notice that the LCD background is black, making those frequencies and other display information stand out. Now, the font appears to be that old school LCD font, and that's most likely because this is an LCD not a dot matrix style screen that we see a lot of on the newer radios these days. With that being said, you do get an S meter or signal receive strength indicator under each frequency. That's left and right. The two lower rotary controls are for adjusting the volume and squelch level for each VFO. The left control for the left VFO and the right control for the right on screen VFO. By pushing in one or the other, we'll change the PTT and control to that VFO. You can leave PTT on one VFO while changing control to the other independently. So you can still talk on one VFO and make changes to the other. 
Now, I hope that makes sense because, well, it did in my brain. Here we can see in here APRS on the left VFO and a Simplex QSO going on on the right VFO. So, uh, yeah, yeah, sounds quite good. Sounds quite good. Um, yeah, yeah, I've never, uh, never been able to find uh, the wind. Now, as mentioned earlier, you can direct dial frequencies using that included microphone. Each of the front facing buttons are back illuminated, which makes it handy to see if you're in a dark environment. Now, before we look at memories and how they're shown on screen of the radio, let's just quickly look at the programming software. So, of course, you do need the programming cable plugged in between your computer and the radio. You can figure out the COM port by just looking in your device configuration. But once you know it, select the COM port within the MA1 programming software and just read back the data, just to check that the comms are working. Down the left side of the software is the main selections, and the two that I'm most interested in are the Basic Settings tab and the Channel Settings tab. Basic Settings will allow you to turn on and off things like beeps, automatic backlight dimming, power on password, enable Vox, and all those other kind of settings you can find in the radio's menu. Now, personally, I much prefer to set the radio up in software as I can see all of those settings on one page at the same time. I can also save these settings back to my computer and either load them onto another radio or restore those settings onto my own radio at a later time. Now, the other tab is the channel setting tab, and this is where we can program in all of the radio's memories, like repeaters, for example. Unfortunately, there doesn't appear to be an import or export feature on this software, so all of the programming needs to be done within the MA1 CPS. However, I would expect chirp support to happen in the near future, if we're lucky. Now, programming in my local repeaters can be a little time consuming, but once done, I just save the settings file to my local computer, ready to be used again in the future. Once you have all the memories stored, just send them all back to the radio. Now the two buttons on the top left of the radio, labelled as VFO and MR, well MR is memory recall. Now when I first pressed the MR button, the memories were recalled, but I noticed that when changing the rotary channel change control, i.e. rotating it, only the frequency was shown on the screen for that particular memory channel. To make it show the alpha tag or name of the memory channel that you programmed in the software, you need to press in once on that large rotary control. The alpha tag should then show on screen, making it easier to identify what each memory channel is for. Now, for me, I programmed in a few local repeaters with their transmit offsets and CTCSS tones required to access. Now, you can make changes to any memories or the radio's features and functions by accessing the menu. Press the F button and then tap on the large rotary control and you'll be able to cycle through the menu options. As you can see, there are a few of them and it's a lot easier to do it in software. However, if you're out mobile somewhere without a computer, then you do still have the option to use the inbuilt menu. So let's do some power tests now. And with the radio connected to my power meter, which is then connected to a dummy load, let's test the three power levels on each band. So low power at 145 megahertz shows an output of around three and a half watts. Changing the radio to medium power shows an output of around 20 watts. And then high power shows an output of around 47 watts. So very close to the rated 50 watts. But you do have to take into consideration the cheap power meter that I'm using and any loss that's happening in the cables. Now up on 70 centimeter band at 435 megahertz, we can see an output on low power of six and a half watts. And then up on medium power, we see 30 watts. Then on high power, we see an output of around 42 and a half watts. So that's actually a smidge over what's actually rated. Because if you remember, 70 centimeter band was only rated at 40 watts. Okay, so one more test we can do is to see how well the transmitted audio sounds. So take a listen to this. This is M0 DQW testing, testing the audio on the Retivis MA1 dual band mobile transceiver. This is the Retivis MA1 dual band mobile transceiver testing the audio transmission on 70 centimeters m0 dqw over so the price of this radio at the time of making this video on the retivis website is around 289 us dollars and things that i like about this is the power output the transmitted audio quality the removable head and obviously the simultaneous dual vfo 
Now, there are a couple of things that I don't like, and that's the internal speaker. I don't think it sounds as good as it could have been. The volume controls also seem a bit laggy. You'll turn it and then it'll kind of take its time to adjust to where you set it. There can be sometimes a slight delay to transmit when pressing the PTT, but I think all of these things can be rectified in firmware. I'll definitely be passing on my feedback to Retivis after making this video. Now, for those of you that are interested to hear what it sounds like on AM or how well it decodes AM for the airband, then let me play you this. Anyway, guys, that's the Retivis MA1 dual band mobile transceiver. Let us know what you think about it down in the comments below. I don't think I've seen this radio before anywhere, but it's possible another manufacturer has done something similar, or maybe this is an OEM product. If you know, drop it down in the comments. I'll be interested to learn more about it. Until next video, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.